Hello. Hey, BookTube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March. And this is a chatty video. I wanted to respond to Britta Bowler's question or topic that she brought up about a, maybe two weeks ago, week and a half ago, about rereading books. And she talked about that, and I thought it was a really interesting conversation. And she kind of put it out to other booktubers, you know, do you reread? Can you talk about your rereading and your thought process and why you do it and if you don't do it? So I thought I'd add my two cents. I am not a huge rereader. Why? Because I feel like life is too short and there's so many books I want to read and I don't I don't want to invest the time to reread a book that I've already read even if I absolutely love it. Have I reread books? Yes. I'm going to show you some in a little bit. But I think the, there's a part of me that wants to devote most of my reading energy and time to new material. I want to read all the books and I'm <laughs> this is going to sound morbid but I'm at an age where I'm quite aware of how limited time I have and I'm hoping my eyes stay healthy enough so I can read well into my late elderly years. Who knows how long that's going to be so I'm almost hyper aware of I'm running out of time. <laughs> Oh, it sounds so awful to say it out loud. But I think that's, an, that's another reason why I DNF so, so easily is because I, I don't have the patience to give books I'm not enjoying any time. But rereading, if, re, if I've read a book and I loved it, gave it five stars on Goodreads, I've gushed about it, I'm usually fine. I'm good. As when I was younger, it was more typical that I would reread a book that I loved. I'm not sure why. I think, honestly, I do think it's it's an age-related attitude of mine. When I was young, you know, when you're young, you think you're immortal. You're gonna, you have all the time in the world to do everything you want. And I, it's like a relaxed, lackadaisical, exciting time all at the same time. And I thought to myself, I could reread anything I love. I love this book. I'm going to read it again. I've read it again. I still love it. I'm going to read it again. And so on and so on. I, I don't feel that way anymore because I'm, it's not that I'm attracted to all the shiny things. And it's not that I'm distracted by one book after another. But I know that there are so many good books out there. And I, I don't want to say it's a waste of time for me to reread. It's just it, it doesn't pull me in as much as discovering something new or something new to me. So why have I reread books? Because they're so amazing and I've loved them so much and I can't get enough of them. And, and if I've read a book and I'm on my first reread, if I've rediscovered it and I've remembered why I loved it so much. Either it's a timeless story, or the writing is just beautiful, or if I I feel like I want more of that book because I've loved it, I've loved the reading experience, the characters, the plot or the lack of a plot, I've loved everything about it. I may reread it. And the books that I have reread multiple times have given me given me the same rewards every time I've reread them. So every reread is not that successful. One in particular is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I re I read Little Women several times in my childhood and my middle grade years and high school and then reread it as an adult probably 15 or so years ago and I didn't like it that much. I love the story I love the story of the March family and the sisters, but as it's as with its with literary merit, I just didn't get the same type of rewards that I got when I was a child. And it was a little depressing, it was a little sad, but you know, I understood that. It wasn't really written for me as an adult. There I have a short stack of books that I have reread multiple times 
and never ever gotten sick of them. I'm gonna show you those. And then I have four books that I've read once and absolutely love and I want to reread. So let me, let me go to the ones that I've reread already. I have read The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood three times. And I originally read it in 1985 when it was first published. I bought it brand new. It was on a display table in a bookstore. I was in Boston and I happened to like the, the description, the, what was on the blurb, and I bought it. I really didn't know anything about it at the time. And I read it then and I thought it was brilliant. I reread it twice within the last five years. I continue to think it's brilliant. Uh, the, the older the book gets, the creepier it is at how timely it is and how applicable it is. But I still think this is a brilliant book, never needed a sequel. It is a standalone piece of art, modern classic, just an exceptional book. Uh, the next one that I have read three or four times is Beloved by Toni Morrison. I, I first read this, I think, in my early 20s and never forgot it. It, it, was, it struck me that strongly. If you've read it, you know. It's one of the best, most powerful, most well-written novels of people enslaved, escaped slaves, the violence and the trauma that came with slavery, and Toni Morrison's language is just masterful and artistic and beautiful. Uh, it strikes me every single time. And because this is primarily a historical novel, it never grows old and it's always applicable. It's always timely. It, there's something to learn from this book every single time I've read it. Absolutely love it. And Toni Morrison is one of those authors who most of her novels that I've read so far are my some of my favorites, and she's an author that will always be um, top tier for me as one of my favorite authors of all time. Uh, another book, this one I've read probably half a dozen times. This is Anita Diamond's The Red Tent. This, is, this was one of the first retellings I've ever read. This is the retelling of a Bible story of Dina, who... In, in the entire Bible has a very, very short passage about her. But Diamond took her story and expanded on it and wrote this spectacular novel. It's just gorgeous. It is educational. It is intelligent. The, the language is incredible. The story is so imaginative. My husband actually loves this book as well. And, you know, it stereotypically applies more towards women, but it is a beautifully written book. And just, I, can't, I just read it over and over and over again. Um, for me, I think it's, I, much of the time, I think it's the beauty of the language that draws me back to a book. It's also how intelligent the plot is, is written and how it's done. If I just can't put the book down if I don't want to close my eyes. It's, I just keep turning the page. A lot of these books, I've stayed up far too late reading them. That's, that's a book that calls to be reread. This one, this was my first novel that I bought myself as a young adult, and I've read it about half a dozen times. John Irving's The World According to Garp. I just, this is a, um, it's commercial fiction, but published way back in the day of, I will find the year, I'm getting to the title page, first published in 1976. So I bought it probably in 1985 and first read it. Absolutely fell in love with it. So quirky and weird, and John Irving's writing is unique and um, just different and weird and twisted and all of that, I just loved it. It was such a weird story with unheard of characters and situations and plots that he writes for them. I, I just, I don't know, and I kept reading it. 
this is one of those books that I read young. I was probably 19 the first time I read it and I just kept reading it because it was so, the reading experience was fun and joyful and memorable. I just kept going and going and going. I would love to reread this, but I'm afraid to because I'm afraid in my maturity, I'll feel differently about it. Let me know in the comments below if, you, if any of you feel that way, if you don't want to pick up a favorite book from many years ago because you're afraid that your opinion will change. It's a weird thing that I have. The book that I've reread the most may, uh, hopefully won't shock you because I reread it again on booktube a year or so ago. Um, I have read this book too many times to remember because I read it repeatedly throughout college. I brought a copy with me, not this particular copy, this is a newer one. It's Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, one of my favorite classics of all time. I just adore this book, and I just did a read-along a year ago, maybe? 2021? I don't remember if it was last year or the year before. But I did a read-along and an analysis of this book. I just think this is one of the best classics ever written. It's a very dark, gothic obsession story. It's not a romance. It's not a love story. It's a romance in the romantic style, but not a typical love romance. It is nothing like that. It is a ghost story. It is, it is twisted and violent and just so good. Uh, so easy to read. It's short. It's not a giant long classic, but I don't, I don't know. I lost track of how many times I've read this book and I will read it again. Absolutely. Now, I have four books that I've read once, and to me they're beloved, and I want to read them all again. I'm not sure when I will do that. I do, I will, I will read them all again. <laughs> the first one is Wicked by Gregory Maguire. I've, I've read this once, t possibly twice, I don't remember. Why do I want to reread it? Just for the fun of it, just for the the, the joy of the reading experience, it's a retelling of The Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz. It's become iconic as a Broadway musical. The book is iconic, the whole story. And I really would love to reread it just to, I don't know, just to enjoy and enjoy the reading experience and get to dive into the story and the characters again. The next one is... Ahab's Wife by Sina Jeter Naslin. This is a giant book. I don't know how many pages. It's over 600 pages. It, this is a heavy hardback. Um, but this book I read with the Critical Chicks years and years and years ago. And I think, I think it holds the records for the longest discussion we ever had. And this is a book at retelling the story of Captain Ahab from Moby Dick and his wife. I just absolutely loved it. I loved the story and the setting, but this is the type of book where I could open to any page and read a random passage and it would be beautiful. Her writing is just gorgeous. Um, let's see. Um, I opened a random page. This is random 262. Let me read this couple of sentences. He used his knee to crack their long bones, and out of the splinters, his finger lifted the fat marrow and took it to her lips, and all in a smack and a swallow, it was gone. This one sentence, and I just, I just loved it. I loved every page of language and story, and this is the type of a book where it may, be, may not be attractive to all readers, you may think it's overwritten, it's overdone, but I just thought it was so beautiful and moving. Okay, George Eliot. I've read Middlemarch twice. I've read all of her novels. I will go back and reread all of them. But the first one, um, after Middlemarch, the first one I want to reread is Romola. Now, why do I want to reread Romola? Because this is the only George Eliot novel I gave four stars to. This is a challenging book. This is the only book of Eliot's that is true historical fiction because she set this in Renaissance Italy. And it's a fascinating book, but it's definitely complex. I want to reread it slowly, and I want to look into the history of 
the religious and cultural history of this novel, and maybe I can bump up my rating to five stars and have a five-star sweep of all of George Eliot's novels. The last book that is one of my all-time favorites, whenever somebody says, what is, you know, what is a book that you would recommend to anybody? And what is one of your favorite books? It is this one. It's Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry, a Pulitzer Prize winner. It is one of the best books I've ever read. It is a Western. Go figure. I, I brought this to my book group uh, as a pick because the theme was Pulitzer winners. And I, I think I just brought it randomly like who's gonna pick it well we did we picked it and it was amazing so many of us loved it absolutely loved it i must read it again i love mcmurtry's writing i love several of the other novels of his that i've read i also read streets of laredo which chronologically comes after this one also loved that one i just want to read it again and this little mass market paperback is is so beat up. I think I like put packing tape all over it. I want to read this copy because this was the copy that I read first. And so kind of that nostalgia thing. I'm not, and I'm not a nostalgic person, but that's what I want to do. So those are my thoughts on rereading. Let me know down below if you reread, how often, if you don't reread, why. Uh, let me hear your thoughts. And thank you to Britta for bringing up the conversation and hope you enjoy my attitudes about rereading and my two cents. See you in the next video, everybody. Bye.